Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at transformations of the reciprocal function. So as we're looking at the reciprocal function, we're looking at the function f of x equals 1 over x. Now because this is a fraction, we need to make sure that there isn't 0 on the bottom of the fraction. So in this case, x cannot equal 0 as far as the domain. So in interval notation, that would run from negative infinity up to 0 and then from zero up to positive infinity, and we're gonna use our union notation in there. Now if we were to graph this function out, we would notice that there is a vertical asymptote along x equals zero, and there is a horizontal asymptote along y equals zero. But when we're talking about these rational functions, a lot of rational functions can be thought of as transformations of this reciprocal function. So stretching or shrinking this graph or shifting it up, down, left, or right. So performing all of those transformations will affect the domain of our function and also where the horizontal and vertical asymptotes are located. So we're gonna look at performing some transformations with that reciprocal function. So our f of x is that one over x reciprocal function, but I wanna think about the function g of x equals one over x minus two. Now I can actually think about this g of x function in terms of this f of x. Notice on the bottom where we had the x, we replaced it with the x minus two. So we can actually think about g of x as being f of x minus two. And what's happening in there is because we're subtracting two directly from the x value, this is a horizontal shift. And remember, horizontal shifts are always backwards of the way that you would want them to be. So this minus two on the x actually moves our graph to the right two spaces. And we should notice that as we're looking at the domain of our function. So initially, with our reciprocal function, we didn't want the x value to be zero. But now as we're looking at this new function, to avoid zero on the bottom, we would want to make sure that our x value isn't two. So notice we went from zero and we shifted to the right two spaces to two. Now also, if we were to graph this function out, we would see that we have a vertical asymptote along x equals two but we haven't changed our horizontal asymptote at all because we haven't shifted our graph up or down. So that horizontal asymptote is gonna be at y equals zero still. Now I'm gonna throw another example at you. My f of x is still gonna be that reciprocal function, one over x, but now I'm gonna throw the function g of x equals two over x plus three. Now we can actually think about rewriting this a little bit. With having that two on top, we can actually separate that off of the top of our fraction. Write it as two over one times x plus three. And then if we think about what's happening in here, getting rid of that x and replacing it with the x plus three, we can think about that as being f of x plus three, but we still have our two out in front of our function. So looking at what's going on in here, having that two being multiplied by our function is a vertical stretch by a factor of two. And adding that three directly to our x, that's a horizontal shift, but it's backwards, so the plus three is actually gonna move us left three spaces. Now as we're thinking about the domain of this function g, to avoid zero on the bottom of the fraction, we would need to make sure that our x value is not negative three. And if we type this one into our calculator, we should see a vertical asymptote at x equals negative three. We haven't shifted our graph up or down, so we're still gonna see that horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Now I'm gonna throw one more example at you. So my f of x function is still that reciprocal one over x, but now I'm gonna throw the function g of x equals three x minus seven over x minus two. Now this one is gonna take a little bit more work than our other ones have, and I'm actually gonna start with doing a little division in here. So what I'm gonna do is take the three x minus seven, and I'm going to divide by the x minus two. Now, in order to see how many times x fits into three x, I'm gonna take three x and divide it by x to get three. Now three times x is three x, and three times negative two is negative six. And remember, we're subtracting when we do this division. So three x minus three x gives me zero, and negative seven minus negative six gives me negative one. 
Now, with having that 3 as our quotient when we do this division, I can actually rewrite this function as 3 minus 1 over x minus 2 because we take the remainder and we put it over our divisor. Now, I'm going to rearrange this just a little bit more to make it negative 1 over x minus 2 plus 3. So now what we've got happening in here is I see that x minus 2 on the bottom of my fraction. So I'm going to think about it as f of x minus 2. But we've got the negative in front of our fraction. So that's going to be the opposite of this function f in here. And then I've still got that plus 3 on the back end. So now there's a lot of changes happening in this function. The minus 2, since we're subtracting 2 directly from the x, is going to be a horizontal shift. So we're going to move to the right two spaces. The negative in front of my function is going to take my graph and flip it over the x-axis, so it's an x-axis reflection. And the plus 3 on the back end is going to be a vertical shift up three spaces. So now as I think about the domain of this function, to avoid 0 on the bottom of the fraction, we need to make sure that our x value is not 2. Looking at the graph, we would see a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Now this plus 3 on the back end, this vertical shift up by 3 spaces, also when we look at the graph, we're going to see our horizontal asymptote has moved up to y equals 3. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.